I started the foundation, actually, because there was no support network or any kind of help for people with pemphigus. When I went to Florida on my vacation, by that time, I had the sores. He was very ill. Uh, he had not been able to eat or drink because of the extensive oral involvement. And he had innumerable blisters and painful open areas on his skin. And that's the kind of scenario in which people actually die from the disease. And of course, I've asked them a very morbid question. If it ever got to be so severe, what would they do for him? And they gave me the answer of a s slow, steady drip of morphine. John Anthony's mother called me several times when she was having such a hard time with John uh, being so sick and it was just, it was hurting her a lot. And I think that being able to have somebody to talk to about how she was feeling regarding her child being sick with such a horrible disease was very, was very supportive and very good for her. Janet Siegel uh, she reached out tremendously and, uh, and then when they had, the foundation had their uh, meeting in July uh, it was wonderful because I got to meet many people who have pemphigus and the physicians there and they got to meet John and there was a, a feeling of uh, a unionship, a solidarity, a feeling of a family. We have several support groups around the country where people meet and talk with each other and occasionally a, one of our medical advisory board doctors will come on board. Pemphigus is a rare but very severe blistering disease uh, of the skin. It's what we call an autoimmune disease, which means that for reasons which we do not understand yet, uh, the body develops an immune uh, response against itself. Uh, the body uh, begins to feel that the skin, in this case, is a foreign object and develop an, immu Im an immune response against it, just like uh, you might develop an immune response against poison ivy. Well, in an autoimmune disease like pemphigus, the control mechanism for just one protein gets messed up. And all of a sudden, the immune cells recognize this one protein, desmoglein, as being foreign. Produces antibodies against it. The antibodies go, they bind to that protein. And they, when the antibodies bind to that protein, the result is that those cells fall apart. If you don't treat the disease, and if you have a severe form of it, then after a while, essentially, your entire skin comes off. You have to take drugs sometimes for years. Anyone that's been on prednisone knows, with time, the side effects of that drug accrue, and they become more and more intolerable and debilitating. The pemphigus is bad, and I don't like it. I want it to go away forever. Like for a million years. No, like a zillion years. The way you do better is by learning something new. And to do that, you need research. To, to do that, you need money. And to do that, you need the support of everyone who has an interest in this disease uh, and in science in general. The magic bullet in immunotherapy and medicine is to find a specific protein or drug or compound that will hone in on only the immune cells that are producing the bad antibodies and kill them without affecting the rest of the immune system, which is what all our drugs do right now. And in terms of uh, pemphigus, pemphigus is a prime model in which that can be done. I've heard that a lot of people go for nine months to a year without a diagnosis. How they're able to do it and, and still live, I don't know. I don't think I could have made it that long. I think one of the real benefits of the foundation is to provide information for both doctors and patients out there. I think that's made a world of difference to those, those physicians and the patients that are out there in areas of the country where their doctor has never seen or treated a case or maybe has treated one case 20 years ago and really doesn't have current expertise. And how do these people find the information? Well, there's really just one source, and that's the Pemphigus Foundation. Who wants for doctors to find a cure, a real cure?